Hi guys and welcome to episode three of the challenge. No, not the challenge, the other one. Um, all bases covered, that's the one. And in this episode, we are gonna be looking at solid PVA bags. How to, when to, why to, and hopefully we can catch a few fish too. And also during this program, oh, I swallowed a fly. Uh, sorry, I swallowed a fly. <laughs> also during this program, we are gonna be giving away a new Fox Halo power pack. So stay tuned to see how you can win one of those. But right now, Brad's gonna play the intro while I get some rods in the water. So first of all, why would we fish with a solid PVA bag? Well, for me, the number one advantage of fishing a solid bag over not fishing a bag is it offers a superb way of concealing the rig and lead arrangement, making it absolutely brilliant for fooling wary rig shy carp. What essentially the carp sees is just a small parcel of feed, just one mouthful, and within that one mouthful happens to be the hook bait. So often, I believe the carp actually get caught almost by accident, and it really is an absolutely superb way for fooling those wary fish. Also, a solid PVA bag offers tangle-free presentation. Your rig is entirely within the confines of a bag, which means it can't tangle, and you're left with perfect presentation every time. Now, because the rig is entirely confined within the confines of a bag, it also allows you to put rigs, hook baits, in places where presentation would otherwise be compromised. So for example, dense lily beds, where if you were casting a unprotected hook, there's a chance that that hook could be caught upon a lily pad. Um, also where there's floating weed or any other type of, of debris on the surface for that matter, again, there's a risk that that hook point could become uh, impaled on something, which would obviously affect the, the presentation, whereas a solid PVA bag can crash through all that with no problem at all. Another advantage of using solid PVA bags is they provide lots of attraction in a small confined area. So this makes it a good tactic when the car park feeding with a great deal of conviction because you can provide lots of attraction without actually needing to introduce any background feed. So with all that being said, let's take a look at what exactly you need to tie up a solid PVA bag. So here I have my PVA bag bucket and in here I have everything I need to tie a complete PVA bag. In the top of the bucket, I have one of the bucket inserts. Now, it's not an essential item or kit, but it allows me to keep all my bits and pieces all organized and it means I've got all my PVA bag equipment in one place. Um, here I have one of the Rapid PVA bag systems. I have some spare PVA bags. I have a couple of syringes there for injecting oils and liquids into the bags, which we'll talk about later. I have my hook baits there, and I have a couple of pairs of scissors, which aren't really necessary, but you never know. And I also have a couple of packs of ready-tied 
leaders. Then in the bucket itself, I have my PVA bag mix, which again we'll look at in more detail. And I also have a liquid for injecting into the PVA bags. So the first thing we need to do before tying the bag is to dry off the lead and the rig, all the rig components, remove any moisture so that it doesn't melt the PVA. And the easiest way to do this is just to simply put this in the bucket of the PVA bag mix. The PVA bag mix I'm using has lots of dry, powdery ingredients, and that does a really good job of absorbing any of the moisture. So there's the lead, rig, all the components there, fully dried out. Now it's ready to put inside a PVA bag. So now we have the Rapid PVA bag system. And the first thing we need to do is put the locking collar on the loading tool. And all we do is just squeeze the loading tool together and slide the locking collar on. We then, Put the loading tool inside the PVA bag. Remove the locking collar, which means the loading tool now expands and fits tightly onto the PVA bag. And we can now use the, the scoop to scoop up a small amount of the PVA bag mix, which goes in the, the bottom of the bag. There's only less than an inch in the bottom of the bag there. Next, we put our, our rig in. Hook bait in first, and, and then I use the lead to tap the hook bait and the hook into that layer of ground bait at the bottom. I then bring the lead and the hook link almost out of the bag, and then trap the line in the little V on the scoop end of the, the loading tool. Next, I add a small amount of the mix, another inch, inch and a half. Now that's covered the hook bait and the hook, and it's gonna create a bit of separation. So when I lower the lead in now, there's no risk of that hook getting caught up on the swivel or around the hook link, um, just eliminates any tangles. And now we can fill up the rest of the bag. Now I say fill up the PVA bag, I'm actually only half filling the bag here and that's sufficient amount of bait to provide a mouthful of food for a carp. All I want is just one mouthful. I'm not looking for a fish to be feeding on a spot. I just want it so even if it's just a passing fish that's not particularly looking for a, a meal. There's just one mouthful of food there. Fish can come along, suck up one mouthful of food and in the process it also takes the hook bait. That's what I'm trying to do. So yeah, we've got a half full PVA bag. The next job is to twist the PVA bag and the loading tool. Then lick around the bottom of the loader. Licking the PVA on the bottom of the loader and push the loading tool down. Hold for a few seconds and that allows the PVA to set and you don't need to use any PVA tape or anything to tie off the bag. The bag is now, is now tied off. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually cast that bag out as it is, but it's not the most aerodynamic of shapes. So to improve that, what I do, I take the, the corners of the, the bottom of the bag, grab the excess PVA, and with this little tag, slick, and fold the PVA down until it sets, just a couple of seconds. And repeat that process in the other corner. Again, pull up all the, all the slack, 
all the excess PVA, lick it, pull it tight and, and fold it down until it sticks. And now we've got a much more aerodynamic shape. And now that's ready to cast out and hopefully it's going to nick me a bite. Well, I've just got both the rods out for tonight. Um, both the rods are on little spots where it looks good for a bite. I've got one rod underneath a overhanging tree and a fairly deep margin. I actually walked that rod down the bank and um, poked the PVA bag underneath the bush and then walked it back around and put it on the alarms. And the other rods fish tight into a corner again where there's quite a lot of overhanging vegetation. There's a nice deep margin. So yeah, they're both on unlikely on, on looking areas and all I'm fishing is just with two solid PVA bags with no other loose feed around them. I do think there are areas that will hold fish. I don't really see the need to introduce any more bait to, to get the fish into the area. I think there's already going to be fish there. And hopefully just that well-placed PVA bag trap will be enough to induce some sort of take. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see. So right now the light is beginning to fade, the traps are set, there's not much more I can do um, apart from get the kettle on, have a brew and hopefully the next time you see me will be with a big fat carp. Well, I was just about to climb in my sleeping bag for the night and just as I did so, one of the rods rattled off and we've got this ghosty two ounces shy of 20 pound. And it was on a rod that I walked down the bank and poked a PVA bag underneath the overhanging tree that's done the business. This fish is like a, a block of ice. We're still in winter and it feels very much like it today. And it just goes to show how good a tactic solid bags can be even when conditions are far from favourable. Well, good morning everyone. The last time you saw me was just before I turned in for the night when I caught that 19 pound, 14 ounce ghosty. And nothing's happened at all through the night actually, up until five minutes ago when I landed a really nice chunky mirror. He's currently sat in the landing net in the margins. Um, it's, it's the moment, it's just before six o'clock. So I'm just gonna wait 15 minutes or so, wait for the light levels to get up, and then we'll take a closer look at him. So here we have that fish that I caught just a short while ago, a nice chunky mirror of just over 25 pound, and it fell on the same rod that produced that fish last night. It was on a solid PVA bag, just flicked underneath an overhanging tree down the margin, and this really has been a fantastic late winter session. So now I'm going to take you through my solid PVA bag rig and the components I use to tie it. So the hook link comprises of 25 pound reflex camo braid and you'll notice that it's pretty short. Um, from the bend of the hook to the end of the hook link is four inches long and the reason it's short is because, well firstly, so that it fits neatly 
inside a small solid PVA bag and there isn't lots of excess braid in there. And also, because the carp isn't moving between eating mouthfuls of bait, because essentially you're just giving it that one mouthful of food, because it isn't moving away from that spot, that short hook link gives you immediate impact with the lead and really emphasizes the bolt effect. So to tie the rig, I firstly tie a small loop on the end of the reflex braid. That's for the hair. I then attach my hook bait, which in this case is a small Northern Special dumbbell wafter. Secure it in place with a small boily stop. And I then thread on a small piece of fine hook silicon onto the braid. And I do this by using a splicing needle. Next, I thread on the hook, which is a size five curve short. And I thread the hook point through the fine hook silicon and take care in not getting the braid caught up on the hook point itself. I then slide the hook down the rig to within five mil of the hook bait itself. And then it's tied off by using a simple knotless knot, just four or five turns. And then over the eye of the hook, I have a small section of shrink tube and that just helps the hook turn and to catch a hold in the carp's mouth. And the rig is finished with a quite a long loop of around one and a half inches long at the end of the braid. And before I tie that loop, the rig itself is measured on my tackle box. So I know that it's exactly four inches from the bottom of the hook to the end of the braid. The reason for having this slightly longer than normal loop on the end of the braid is it allows me to attach the rig to the swivel on the main line. Now I know a lot of people like to use um, quick change swivels which then require um, an anti-tangle sleeve or something to secure it in place but for me that's more clutter inside a small PVA bag. The PVA bag itself may only be a couple of inches or three inches long and if you have an anti-tangle sleeve it can take up room in the bag and sometimes even poke through the bottom of the bag. So in this instance here, we've done away with any anti-tangle sleeves, quick chain swivels, and just gone with a long loop instead. So at the start of this program, I said you could stand a chance of winning one of the new Fox Halo Power Packs. And all you have to do to stand a chance of winning one is three very simple things. Firstly, like this video. Secondly, subscribe to my YouTube channel. In fact, the like button and the subscribe button are right next to each other. So you don't even have to turn me off. You can like and subscribe right now while I'm still talking. Okay, if you've done that, great. Right, next thing. Next thing you have to do is answer this very simple question. What hook pattern do I use to tie my solid PVA bag rig? So make sure you like, subscribe, and put your answer in the comments section below, and I'll announce a winner in the next episode. So we've already looked at the rig that I use for fishing solid PVA bags, but I do think it's important to look at the lead setup. Now you'll notice here I'm fishing with an inline lead, and this is by far the best lead arrangement to use in this situation. The inline lead is much neater and has a lot less clutter compared to other lead arrangements such as a lead clip for example. This means it fits perfectly inside the confines of a small PVA bag. Now there are two ways of fishing with an inline lead. Um, here I'm fishing with it semi-fixed so the lead can slide off the rubber insert. So in the rare situation that the line was to break the lead can slide off the rubber insert and off the main line meaning that the fish isn't pulling a lead around with it. Now this is a setup that I would use for all of my open water fishing where there's no weed, no snags present, and where you don't need to lose a lead. However, there are times when you do need that lead to discharge, such as very weedy waters where playing a fish with a lead will make things a lot more difficult. And in these situations, I opt for a drop off in line. To fish an inline lead drop-off style, I like to use the Edges drop-off inline kit as well as the drop-off plugs and pins. Now when fishing a drop-off inline lead, the line actually runs around the outside of the lead rather than through the centre as it would in a traditional inline lead setup. 
This means in the event of a take, the plug actually comes out of the inline lead and because there's no line running through the center of the lead, the lead is discharged on the take. So that's the rig and lead setups covered. Now let's take a look at the hardware I use when fishing solid PVA bags. Now, because a fully loaded solid PVA bag, even a small one, may weigh in excess of five ounces, you need to make sure that the rods you're using are up to the job of casting them out into the lake. Now, you don't need to go out and buy top of the range rods just to be able to fish with solid PVA bags, but they do need to be able to cast heavy weights at your desired range. Now, the rods I use for the vast majority of my fishing are 12 foot six inch, three and a half pound Tesco. And this allows me to fish at whatever range I need to fish, be it in the margins or as far as I can cast. I've got a nice soft tip so I can fish at close range and play fish at close quarters without any risk of, of hook pulls, but they have a lot of power down below to be able to punch heavy weights a long distance. Now, as well as the rod, you also need to make sure that your main line is up to the job of casting out heavy weights. For the majority of my fishing, I like to use the 23 pound Exocet Trans Car Key. It may sound like it's a, a heavy main line, but it has a diameter of just 0 0.4 mil, which is the same as a lot of other 15 pound lines on the market. It really is a very tough, robust line, perfect for casting solid PVA bags up to around 100 yards range. However, if I need to go past this distance, then I will drop the braking strain and the diameter of the main line, but I would always couple this up with a shock leader of some description. This just gives you peace of mind that when you are casting heavy weights, you're not gonna have that dreaded crack off. So when it comes to the bait to use inside a solid PVA bag, it really is important to use very small food items. So ideally, micro pellets no bigger than two or three millimeters and also powder type ground baits are the best option now there are two reasons for using small food items inside a solid pva bag the first one is it allows a bag to be packed as tightly as possible it means there's no space for air in between each each particle as opposed, if, if you were to use larger pellets, for example, there'd be lots of gaps, lots of spaces for air to get trapped inside a PVA bag. So by using really tiny food items, you're able to pack that bag as tightly as possible, making it more aerodynamic for casting. The second reason for this choice of bait is it provides lots of attraction, whilst little by way of actual food value. If you were to use larger pellets, you're creating more of a, a meal type situation, which is not the effect I'm trying to have. You're looking to provide masses of attraction where the carp just simply has one mouthful of food and within that one mouthful also happens to be the hook bait. You're not looking to create a, an actual feeding situation. Also, by using these tiny food items, there's no risk of overfeeding. You're effectively just creating an attractive parcel of food, just enough to get one quick bite. So this is the mix that I use for the majority of my PVA bag fishing. It's made up primarily of, of powders actually. There's some boily base mix in there, lots of attractive ground baits, and there's also some very, very small pellets. I think the, the biggest pellet in there is probably two mil in size. Alternatively, you could also use a bag of fine micro pellet. I've got here a mixture of one mil and two mil pellets. Again, these tiny pellets pack out the bag really tightly as it means there's no space for, for air in between each pellet. So something else I like to do to add even more attraction to a otherwise very attractive little parcel of food is to add a liquid. Now there are countless liquids on the market that you could use to boost up your PVA bags. Just make sure they are PVA friendly though first and not a water-based flavor. Um, this is what I like to use in the colder winter months, Amino Blend 365. And I add this to the bag simply by using a syringe and injecting it straight into the finished bag. Well, that's it for my time here at Vermoyden Lake down at Fenland Fisheries in Cambridgeshire. It's been a fantastic winter session. Two fish, a mid-20, really can't complain with that. But 
I am looking forward to spring now. Thanks very much for watching this episode. I hope you've got plenty of tips and tricks to help you with your own solid PVA bag fishing. Don't forget to enter the competition where you can win one of the Halo Power Packs and I'll see you guys in the next episode.